Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanted to give you a little tip about something you might wanna know before you try to launch an ICO or a crowd sale on Ethereum, on the blockchain, in order to raise funds for your project. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can become blockchain developers. So I wanna give you a little tip uh, if you're trying to launch an ICO. And this is something that, you know, I've kind of shared with people a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people email me and, you know, contact me about launching ICOs. Um, you know, you might've seen some of my other videos where I, you know, show off this demo website here, uh, crowdsaledemo.com, where I, you know, have a system for launching ICOs on Ethereum. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are surprised at how much it actually takes to launch an ICO. Um, you know, if you've seen my other videos, uh, I, you know, I spell out what you need. Um, I even listed on this website, you know, you need uh, a token, you need crowd sale contracts, uh, pre-sale if you're doing that, KYC user registration, you know, admin tools, uh, marketing website, things like that. You know, your website needs assets. It's, it's a lot of stuff. And, you know, some people are really surprised when they realize how much they really need in order to pull off an ICO. You know, a lot of people say, hey, I just need a token. I want a token. And that's, that's a good start, but there's a lot more that you need in order to really move forward and pull that project off. And I think sometimes there's a lot of sticker shock when you realize how much work it takes and how much it costs in order to, you know, pull off an ICO. Um, you know, ICO is one of those things where, you know, you're, you're spending money to make money. You know, there's a big potential payoff uh, if, if you can successfully raise the funds for an ICO. But yeah, like I said, there's a lot of uh, kind of shock when you realize how much it actually costs to get it done because there's a lot of work that needs to happen. So if you're in the position where you have the capital to start and do it or build it yourself or whatever, um, you know, I recommend just going full force, but just like any other business, it's really great uh, sometimes to just test things, to, you know, put something out there with, you know, minimum viable product, a minimum viable test to see if you can raise any funds for your project in order to, uh, you know, before you, you know, go full force. And so when people are in this situation, I try to push them towards uh, having an ICO pre-sale first before they uh, move on to a public crowd sale. Now let me explain the difference in what that is. So, you, you know, whenever people hear ICO, you might, if, you've, if you've participated in ICOs before, you might see a lot of phases that happen, right? Well, pre-sale usually has, uh, or oftentimes has a distinct behavior from the crowd sale, which is, in an ICO presale, it's common for the funds to go directly to the wallet or directly to you know the person who's holding the ICO instead of into a vault somewhere. So let me explain what that means. So whenever you do the crowd sale, a lot of times you know it's kind of like Kickstarter. If if the project is funded successfully, um, then you know the person who's holding the ICO or the company or whatever uh, gets all the ether, all the capital raised, and this is all handled on the blockchain. And if it's unsuccessful, then you know investors can usually claim refunds. I mean that's how a lot of these ICOs work. Um, and it, but it's also common for to have an earlier stage round that's not quite as public, um, where you can just hold a pre-sale where you get to keep you know, the funds, regardless of whatever happens in, uh, you know, the, the crowd sale phase, like you're not worried about whether the crowd sale is successful or not. Now, this is, yeah, it's riskier for the early stage investors, but they know that. And that's why pre-sale tokens are typically offered at a deeper discount. So it incentivizes people who, uh, you know, want to try to to make a riskier investment to get in earlier and hold more tokens. Now, that's one reason I, I recommend people try this pre-sale idea. Now, here's a couple reasons why. 
So if you can get the funds initially of pre-sale, typically, you know, pre-sale investors, you can try to get larger amounts of funding from single individuals or entities rather than trying to just open up to a crowd sale where you're trying to market like crazy and get, you know, a bunch of smaller investments from a lot of different people. Um, you know, pre-sale is typically like trying to facilitate transactions, larger transactions uh, through a smaller number of investors. And those are people you've typically pitched to in person or over Telegram or things like that. And you might have even facilitated like wire transfers with banks in order to um, actually accept those donations and things like that. And you can contribute on the investor's behalf. So if, if you can do that, you may only need a small number of investors to actually have a successful presale, right? And when you do that, you'll get the funds and now you can actually spend those funds to build out what you need in order to hold a public sale or a crowd sale. And that's what's really important. So if you feel like you don't have a lot of money to, to do the ICO, to do the whole thing, you can start with a pre-sale and then raise the funds you need in order to create a public sale right, to do everything you need there because you need to spend money on more smart contracts for the crowd sale, security auditing, uh, assets for your website, like really slick looking videos and things like that um, so that people have confidence in your project. Uh, you need a lot of money for marketing. There's just a lot that has to happen. Like I said, sometimes people can really be shocked when they realize how much it takes in order to pull it off. So that's why I try to steer people towards, you know, just sometimes, depending on who it is, towards this possible pre-sale model. Um, and that's, you know, a, a good way to go for a lot of people. So with that being said, if y'all are interested in learning more about that, just let me know. Um, if you're interested in holding a pre-sale or more curious about this package that, you know, I've talked about in my previous videos, so you can feel free to email me. I've got my email address down in the description below. So I hope you all found that helpful. If you have any more questions about sort of the, you know, business and strategy side of this kind of thing, also let me know. Um, so yeah, I hope you found that helpful. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University. Mm -hmm.